Welcome to a Code Report Leap Code Solution video. In this video, we're going to be covering the solution to problem three, sliding puzzles from Leap Code Contest 69. So here is our problem statement, but we're going to skip this because this problem is incredibly easy to understand. So the problem is based off a children's game called a sliding puzzle. You may have seen one when you were a child. And in our problem, this is our solved state. So we're going to be given an initial board, and we need to return the minimum number of moves, and a move is swapping a zero with another tile, to get to this solved state. So let's take a look at an example on our left. This one's quite trivial. We can see that all we need to do is swap the zero and the five, which will be one move, in order to get to our solved state. A slightly less trivial example is this one. We have to swap our zero and our one, then the zero with the two, then the zero with the three, and we've arrived at our solved state. So the solution to this one would be three moves. So it's an easy problem to understand. Uh, how do we solve this? We're gonna solve this using an algorithm called breadth first search, or BFS. Um, so in order to perform BFS, we're gonna need a queue of boards that we need to check uh, whether they equal the solved state or not. So we're gonna initialize our queue and then push onto it our initial board. And then we're going to create a while loop and we're going to check uh, each board starting with uh, the one at the front of the queue. And if the queue equals our solved state, uh, we're going to end our algorithm and return the number of moves it took to get to, it took to, get to that board. Um, but if it does not equal our solved state, we're then going to look at that board and add to our queue the possible boards that can be achieved from uh, swapping the zero with uh, adjacent tiles. So our queue will start off uh, with one board, which is our initial board, we'll call it B0. And then we're gonna look at the possible boards we can uh, get to from this. So we could swap the zero with the one or the zero with the four. Uh, so after checking that our initial board isn't actually the solved state, we're gonna push uh, the next two boards onto our queue, and then we're gonna pop off uh, the board zero that we already checked, and we're gonna put that in an unordered set so that we make sure that we're not checking duplicate boards. If we don't do that, our algorithm will time out. Uh, so after checking the first board and adding the two possible boards from that position, we end up with our to-do queue and our done unordered set. So let's take a look at what B1 is. Assume that that's swapping the zero with the one. Uh, from this position, we'll check, does this board equal our solved state? It doesn't. So then from there, we're gonna look at what are the possible boards we could get from this position. Uh, and so we have three possible boards. Note that sw swapping it with the one is gonna give us a board that we've already seen, the B0. So we're not gonna do that one. We'll just add uh, board three and board four, which is swapping with the two and swapping with the five and then we'll pop B1 off of our to-do list and then add it to our unordered set and done. And then you'll just continue this algorithm until either you've exhausted all possibilities and there's no possible board, in which case we'll return negative one, or we found a solved state. So let's take a look at the code. So here we have our function sliding puzzle, which as a parameter takes the 2D board. This is just a type alias and the function is going to return an int the number of moves it takes to get to our solved state, or negative one if it's not possible. So the first thing we do is we initialize a queue that takes a parameter, a struct called the breadth first search info. This isn't really necessary, but it makes it easier to understand as I'm showing the code. So this just stores your board, the coordinates of where the zero is, so we don't need to repeatedly uh, do a nested for loop to find its position, and then the number of moves, and a constructor to construct this guy. Uh, and after that, we initialize our unordered set. We're using a string for our parameter here because it's not possible uh, for an unordered set to take a 2D vector. And then I've, I've created a simple function, gen string, which will create a string based on your 2D vector. So right off the bat, uh, we insert uh, our first initial board into this unordered set. Uh, then we find where our zero exists in our initial board. And once we find that, we construct uh, a BFS info. 
with zero as the number of moves at this point in time. So we can collapse this. Then we have our solved uh, vector, 2D vector. So this is what we're going to check to see if our board equals this, then we know we're done. And these two vectors of ints here are just for looping through the possible moves that we can make given our, per our current position. So this will move uh, down, the, move the zero down one, this will move the zero up one, this will move it to the right, and this will move it to the left if we combine the x offset and the y offset. So here's our while loop. We're gonna do this while loop as long as to do is not empty. Uh, so we declare a local reference to the beginning of our queue. We check, is it equal to the solve state? If so, we can break out of this loop. If not, we have to add the next boards uh, that are possible to get to from the current board that we just checked. So to do that, we create uh, the coordinates that we're gonna swap the zero with. We do that by just referencing our x offsets and adding them to what our current zero position is. We have this function if valid move. So when you're in the top left corner of your puzzle, you can't move the zero up or to the left. You can only move it to the right or down. So this function simply just makes sure that the new coordinates for our zero are valid. And if it is, we create a local copy of our board, then we swap the zero with uh, the new position. And at that point, we're going to push it onto our queue. Uh, so the only thing we're doing before we do that is we're checking to see whether we have already checked this board. So we generate a string. We check to see if it's in our uh, done unordered set here. And if it is, then we're not going to add it because we don't want to check things multiple times. And like I said before, if we do this, our algorithm is going to time out. Um, but as long as we haven't checked it, we just push it onto our queue. We make sure we insert it into our uh, unordered set after that point so that we don't do it again in the future. And uh, we just repeat that for each of the boards. So once we finish generating the new boards that we need to check, we pop off uh, the front and then we repeat our algorithm. And after we're done this while loop, all we need to do is check whether our queue is empty. If it is, that means the current or the initial board that we were given is not possible uh, for it to be solved. And if it's not empty, that means that we just need to look at the front element because we didn't pop that up. We just broke out of our loop and then check the number of moves. And believe it or not, this algorithm uh, runs in constant time. Um, and you can prove that by checking that when you have a, a unsolvable board, there's a maximum number of boards that you can check. It's equal to 360. It's six factorial divided by two. Um, I'll leave a link below in the description uh, of a proof of that when you have a sliding puzzle board, uh, with n puzzle pieces, uh, the maximum number of solvable states that the board can be in is n factorial divided by 2. Thanks for watching.